Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Faith and I make videos about traveling and lifestyle. If you're new here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press notification button. Be notified every time I upload a new video. So guys, in today's video, we are going to look at how to fill in the visa application form. Whether you're applying for a C visa, D visa, uh, visitor visa, whatever, we are going to see how to fill in the form step by step because most of you do mistakes in the application form, submit to the embassy and you cannot reverse anything uh, uh, when you've already submitted your visa application form to the embassy. So we are going to look at step by step on how to fill in the form and emphasize some key points. So let's go. Uh, so guys, this is the Sabia visa application form. You can find it on the embassy, the website embassy of Serbia. So yeah, let's start. So this small box you see on the right left, with that box you have to put your passport photo. The passport photo must to have a white background, like how you see this. It must to have a white background with a size of 3.5 centimeter in the width and the height must be 4.5 centimeter you understand guys like how you see this small photo here it must be 3.5 centimeter and here it must be 4.5 centimeter yeah so this this side of the right corner it this side is for the consulate to fill in that's not your part so let's go in slot number one uh, which is the sun name so i'll give an example if you're called rita nachi so your sun name in this case is nachi let's go to number two the maiden name the maiden name is the name you have before you get married so in this case, the maiden name is the same as the son name, which is Nachi. So let's go to part number three, which is your first name. So the first name here is Rita. You understand, guys? So guys, uh, to emphasize on the first name, it is that name you're being given in the church, like Rita, that Bible name, Rita carol you know so guys let's go to part number four which is the date of birth in the always state on how you have to arrange your date of birth because there are so many formats but here they they sh they give you the format on how you can state your date of birth so for, the, for this case you have to arrange your date of birth by putting the year you born first you put that dash, then you put the month you are born, and then the date. For this case, I'll use an example. If you are born in 2001, dash, uh, fab, dash, and then the day, uh, the second. You understand, guys? Yeah, so guys, let's go to slot number five, which is the ID number. Yeah, here they say it's optional, but uh, for me, I would port it because I have it. Like, let's say if you're a citizen of, if it, I believe you have national IDs. So you get your national ID number and you put it there. So let's go to slot number six the place and country of birth so here you have to mention the name of the hospital where you were born and the country like you name the hospital name the address of the hospital and then the country where the hospital is you understand guys so let's go to slot number seven which is the current nationality 
current nationality is where you were apparently like let's say you were in south africa and you relocated to germany or belgium and you have the citizenship for belgium so that means that's your current nationality and the south africa is your original nationality do you understand this so let's go to slot number nine which is six are you a male or a female so if you're male you tick male if you're female you tick female so let's go to slot number 10 which is the marital status so if you're single you can tick single if you're married you tick married if you're separated you tick separated divorced widow and if you're not sure about your marital status you tick others yeah so let's go to slot number 11 which is the father's name yeah here you have to mention both your parents name let's go to slot number 12 which is your mother's name you have to mention both your mother's both your mother's name both the names so guys let's go to slot number 13 which is the type of passport or type of type of travel document you're holding so one is the national passport are you holding a national passport diplomatic passport uh, official passport audience passport sims passport or other type of passport depending on the type of passport you're holding then you tick if you're diplomatic in the government you tick if you're an official like in the military or something you tick so that's it with the type of if you your document is not care you must specify specify that they put for you option for specifying the other type of uh, passport you're holding so let's go to slot number 14 which is the number of passport so every passport has an, a number so you have to type it there so let's go to slot number 15 the issue uh, issued by you have to mention your country if let's say republic of uh, this republic of you uh, mention your country that issued the passport uh, let's go to slot number 16 which is the date of issue you have to state the date of issue you have to follow the format of the date so don't forget about that and then uh, um, let's go to slot number 17 which is the va which is the valid valid until when you mentioned the date in which your visa will expire so guys this good slot number 18 says if you reside in a country other than your country of origin do you have permission to return to that country so guys uh, this means that uh, let's say you live in south africa that's your country of origin but you have a temporary residence of dubai or qatar so if you have the temporary residence of that country you mention the number and the validity here you tick yes and mention the number and the validity period if you don't have a residence of an, another country where you your car where you you're residing you mention no let's say if you've never traveled before just mention no you understand guys so let's go to slot number 19 which is the current occupation if you have an, an occupation uh, you type it there let's say you're working in a business you're working in an office if you're a plumber if you're a electrician you mention it there if you're a person doing personal businesses 
uh, selling simple things in your job description is not so clear just put business woman like most so if you're self-employed so guys let's go to slot number 20 the employer and the employer's address telephone number for students the name and the school address so guys i would use an example if you applying for this mostly works for short stay visas like tourists you want to visit your parents or your friend in Serbia and then if let's say you're employed write your employer's name or company's name the address and the telephone number if you're a student you're applying to come visit your family uh, uh, mention your school's name and the address this works as a tie like you have a responsibility back home you come and visit and then after go back home you understand guys so if you have it don't forget to mention it so let's go to slot number 21 country of destination so in this case your country of destination will be Serbia so there is this good slot number 22 which is the type of visa here we have uh, airport transit like let's say you want to go to Hungary but you want to transit through Sa uh, Serbia that means you have to get Serbia transit visa which is visa A then another one is short stay visa which is C let's say you want to come for a conference or visit your family your, uh, you visit your friends uh, you want to tour around Serbia and stay for a small period of time you can apply for a short stay visa which is visa C so then we also they also have a long stay visa which is a long which is visa D this one works if you're to pip to those applying for student you want to study in Serbia, work work, work. Um, if you're married to a Serbian person if you're going what you're going to do in Serbia it is going to take you quite a long period of time like more than a year so that's when you apply for a D visa you take D visa so depending on your reason or what you're going to do take appropriately you understand guys yeah so let's go to slot number 23 which is the individual or collective are you guys coming in a group or you're coming in, in as a person an individual so if you're coming as a single you take individual if you're coming in a group you take group so guys let's go to slot number 24 which is the number of entries here we have single entry uh, two entries and multiple entries so guys single entry means if you're going to enter Serbia and exit Serbia and you cannot go back to Serbia two entry means you're going to enter Serbia exit then again go back to Serbia with the same visa and then exit that means you've entered Serbia two times and then multiple entry means you're going to enter Serbia more than two times so depending on what you do or depending on what you're going to do in Serbia take appropriately you might find what you're going to do requires you to enter Serbia multiple times take multiple times you understand guys so let's go to slot number 25 which is the length of visit here you mentioned the number of the days or months you're going to spend in Serbia you understand guys if let's say one week you mention one week which is seven days and then a visa is requested for here you must to specify we have well, what we call the c visa and the d visa c visa is usually 90 days and the d visa is usually 180 days 
So if the visa you're applying for lies in that category range, you, you take uh, 90 days, which is the C visa. So guys, let's go to slot number 26, which is the other visas issued during the past three years and their period of validity. So guys, when you're applying for Sabia visa, you if you have a travel history or let's say you visited uh, qatar or dubai or any european country you can mention the the visa issued to you the type of visa and the validity when it was issued and when it was expired in the past three years so guys this actually works as the travel history yeah so let's go to part number 27 yeah which in uh, in case of transit do you have an entry permit for the country you are entering after the republic of Serbia? guys if you have you if you don't have you say no if you have you say yes Val uh, you mentioned the, va the validity date valid until and the issuing authority which is the country so guys let's go to part number 28 uh, which is the previous visit to the republic of Serbia. if you have any you say yes yeah, uh, you say yes if you don't have any you say no you have if you have the visa before you say yes if you don't have the visa before you say no yeah, so guys, let's go to slot number 29, which is the purpose of travel. Yeah, there are many of them. So you take what's, what you're going to do. There's tourism, business, private visits, science, stroke culture, culture stroke sports, official visit, medical treatment, education, internship, employment, family reunion, international conferences, stroke meeting, initial visit, visa, and other reasons. So guys, depending on what you're going to do, you take appropriately. So let's go to slot number 30, which is the intended date of arrival in the Republic of Serbia. So guys, for this case, if you booked a ticket and it says you're going you put the date that you exactly going to arrive in Serbia. i hope i'm clear with that so let's go to number 31 intended date of departure from the republic of Serbia. here you have to put your return date the date you go to the date you go to the airport of Serbia, and they put for you the exit stamp that is that that is your uh departure date so let's go to slot number 32 which is the border post of the first entry or the transit route so here you must to put the country of your final destination which is Serbia. so guys let's go to slot number 33 means of transport so depending on how you're going to travel to Serbia, whether using air freight or using the boat but of course it's the air freight because Serbia is a landlocked country so you have to definitely use the air freight or you have to use the road if let's say you're applying from the nearby countries so uh, let's go to slot number 34 which, uh, which is name of host or company in the Republic of Serbia and the contact person in a host company if not applicable give the name of the hotel or a temporary uh, address in the Republic of Serbia so here you have to mention the name of the host or the name of the company that is inviting you you have to uh, you have to put their telephone number 
you have to put uh, the full address and the email id you understand guys so let's go to slot number 35 which is uh, who is paying for your travel and the living costs so if you're applying as a, a tourist we believe tourists you would do, you don't know anybody in sabia even uh, so that means you you yourself sponsoring yourself that means you have to take self if you have a host family if you have uh, if you have a family you have friends that means you have to take host family that is going to sponsor you so guys let's go to slot number 36 uh, means of support during your stay here we have cash travelers checks credit cards accommodation and others uh, travel and all health insurance valid until we have some guys this means that for if let's say you're coming as a tourist you're coming to visit you must to take cash you take what you're going to use while, while you're in Serbia you're going to use some cash you might have cash or you might have a credit card you know you take the means you're going to use to support yourself so that if you have if you let's say you're coming as a visitor you're having a family here or somebody you're going to visit and it's going to provide you with accommodation you must to take accommodation you take accommodation you can take credit card and you can take cash uh, yeah guys don't forget to take your health insurance that one is a must it cuts across to everybody and you have to mention the validity the validity of your insurance travel insurance or health insurance so let's go to uh, slot number 37 which is the spouse's family name here if you have a husband or a wife in Serbia that is inviting you you mention both his name so guys um let's go to slot number 38 which is uh, the spouse maiden name here you must to put the, the wife name before marriage it's, it's just like the same name the same the same name same name same name you understand guys so let's get slot number 39 which is the spouse first name which is the last name or the given name in the church and then the spouse's date of birth which is the you mentioned the date don't follow don't forget to follow the the arrangement of the day date, dates and then the uh, slot number 41 which is the spouse's place of uh, the spouse's place and the country of birth yeah you mentioned the address of the spouse plus the country where he was born so let's go to slot number 42 which is the children application must be submitted separately for each passport so if you have some children you mention their names in on your application mention their names on your application but if you're applying for but if you applying for them visas you must to uh, you must to apply for them separately so you have to mention their names their first name and the date of birth i don't know if i'm clear guys so guys this good slot number 44 uh, which is the applicant's home address here you have to state your home address where you stay currently and um, uh, slot 45 you must mention your phone number and the email address so slot number 44 place and date you must to mention the place where you filled in this application form and the date so slot number 47 which is the last one is the signature you have to sign in that slot 
and if you have for minors you cannot sign but instead your parents can sign for you so not to forget um, I forgot to uh, show you this side of the this side of the of the form is basically for the uh, consulates to fill in so this side of the form is not for you when you scroll let me scroll up for you you can see that they are this space is only for consulate to fill in not for you yeah so guys i hope you've learned something in today's video i hope you've learned how to fill in the form if you have any questions uh mention them in the comment section and yeah i'll come and talk about them and if you find this video very interesting kindly like and share it to your friend yeah not to forget uh, this is just a simple advice before you fill in the uh, the application form ensure you have all the data make sure that you don't forget anything ensure you, you you make sure that you check all your spellings make sure that you've you've ticked everything rightly and make sure that everything is okay and don't forget to sign it's very important so there is uh, before you submit your visa application ensure that you double check before you submit your visa application to the embassy ensure that what you filled in in the form all is right because once you submit your application and you remembered hey i didn't do this hey this one i ticked it wrongly i wrote a wrong sparing or this i was supposed to put it here with this be very careful when you're filling in double check before you submit because you might regret and you might cause problems to your visa application yeah so guys that is it with my advice i hope you've learned something and yeah that's the end of the video thank you for watching see you in my next video bye ciao